Hi, I'm Cherie with RVMobileInternet.com and today I wanted to talk about using cellular data and what is the best way to turn that into a Wi-Fi signal that you can use to share with your computers and other devices that you might be traveling with. Now cellular has become a very popular option for our viewers. It's kind of one of the truly mobile options that's easy to get as long as you have access to the cellular tower that you're parked near and have a good signal. So it's something that us RVers use very, very frequently in our travelers travel to keep connected. There's three primary ways to use it, however. That's using your smartphone, a jetpack, or a more advanced mobile router. I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons of each approach so you can decide which makes the best sense for you. First option is just using the personal hotspot mode off of your cellular phone. Most smartphones come with the option to turn on something called personal hotspot and that basically takes the cellular connection that your phone is receiving that you would use ordinarily to check your email, use apps, browse the web, use Facebook, that sort of stuff. And then it turns it into a Wi-Fi hotspot so that this device is transmitting a Wi-Fi signal that then your computers, tablets, gaming systems, and any other devices you might have can use that signal. Most carriers include this option included with your cellular data plan. Some of the resellers out there, they, are, they resell like on Verizon, Sprint, or T-Mobile's network. They, some of them don't allow this. They actually have the feature turned off. So you will need to check if you're using something like Straight Talk or Karma or any of those other resellers that are out there. But if you're going direct with the carriers, most all of them include at least some mobile hotspot. They might also call it tethering data. To use it, you just go into the settings and then you turn on the personal mobile hotspot feature. You can set it to use either a Wi-Fi signal or you can do tethering, which is actually using a cable out of the lightning port or other port out of your phone and directly plugging it into your computer. That's called tethering. The downsides of, of using this method are um, if you're traveling with multiple people and your phone is providing the internet signal, if you need to leave the RV to go out to run some errands, you've just took the internet with you and everyone else in your household now has to figure out what else to do. Also, if you are doing anything that you might want to remote into your RV, such as a security camera, uh, monitoring backups, or you have processes that are running while you're out, well, you're probably going to want to take your cell phone with you when you go out exploring or go grocery shopping or things like that, and you have no connectivity left in the RV. So those are some of the downsides. Also, phones can be a little finicky with using that mobile hotspot feature. They can get easily confused, like if you're using the Wi-Fi mobile hotspot mode and your device, you're not connecting to it. I find a lot of the times when I go back to connect to the phone, it's now connected via Wi-Fi because I left on the Wi-Fi hotspot to whatever the other Wi-Fi hotspots are around in the area. So it's now receiving Wi-Fi instead of transmitting it. And then I have to go back in and reset it. So it can be a little bit frustrating. We mainly recommend this option for solo travelers, those who are not relying on mobile internet, um, and also as for your backup carrier. It's fine to use it for that. If you're in a household or you're relying on mobile internet, you're probably better off having a dedicated data source. Come in. This is called a mobile hotspot. Uh, you might also know by, them by their branded name called MiFi's or Jetpacks. They are a dedicated device. They are cellular, just like your cell phone, but they don't make phone calls. Um, they are exclusively used for data. Um, and then it creates a Wi-Fi hotspot off of it that most devices can support anywhere from five to 15 users simultaneously. And then it becomes a dedicated hotspot for your needs. You can leave it in your RV, you can take it with you. They usually have an integrated battery in them so that they can run autonomously without having to be plugged in anywhere from five to 20 hours, depending upon the model. Um, some of them can transmit on the 2.4 megahertz, some on five megahertz if you're wanting to balance that out. Um, the advantage of these are, of course, it's dedicated. You're not walking off with your internet with it. Uh, you can leave it back in the RV. 
you can take it with you if you want to go on a hike or picnicking and you still want to have your internet access with you. Um, so they're a great option for that. We recommend these for those with multiple people connecting within an RV. We recommend them for those that are relying on mobile internet so that they're not having to balance the use of their cell phone with their internet usage. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just a really great all-around option that you can usually purchase these from the cellular carriers for about $200 for the current models. And we do have reviews of these at RV Mobile Internet. If you go to rvmobileinternet.com slash reviews, we track all of the current models there so you can compare the specs and see which ones we recommend for each carrier. Now, if this isn't enough, now the Wi-Fi signal on these it's usually strong enough for most RV sizes, but if you have a larger RV, you may find that you have difficulty. If you've got this set up in the front of your RV, you may not be able to receive the signal in the rear. And that's a common issue. Also, if you're wanting to have a hardwired network in your RV, these may not be the best option to rely on. And that's when you get into mobile routers. And there are options to give you increased flexibility, such as using a Wi-Fi Ranger, uh, Pepwave uh, Surf on the Go, and Soho also have the options, where basically you're gonna use a cable to tether the MiFi into its USB port on the back. It's on the side. Are you here? <laughs> <laughs> and then this device can also pick up Wi-Fi signals as well, so like a campground Wi-Fi signal, and then it converts it into either its own Wi-Fi network, which has, this is, has a much stronger Wi-Fi radio in it than the Jetpack does, so this would be able to reach most of the interior of an RV, maybe even a small house. Um, and it also has an Ethernet network, so you can actually hardwire things in, so if you've got printers or a NAS or other devices that you want to have high connectivity into. There's also routers that have integrated modems, and modems into them, so basically they're like the MiFi, they are their own cellular modem, and then they have the Ethernet ports on the back, as well as other antennas for picking up better signal. This one does Wi-Fi and cellular. Um, there are many options out there. We track those at rvmobileinternet.com slash routers. You can see what all the options are. And uh, so this has been a quick overview of the pros and cons of using smartphones, MiFi's, or mobile routers. Join us at rvmobileinternet.com. See you next time.